Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Becca and today we're gonna to be trying a lot of new makeup from Revlon, from Milk Makeup, from Salt New York, Trini London, Urban Decay, and an eyeshadow palette from a new brand to me called Odin's Eye, which I'm really excited about. So I would love for you to subscribe. If this is your first time here, welcome. And let's get into the makeup. So my skincare is already done and prepped and I finished off with an SPF from a brand called Ali. This is a Japanese SPF. It's the Extra UV Facial Gel SPF 50 PA4 Pluses. And I really like this. It's a blend of chemical and physical filters. And it doesn't leave a white cast on me. Um, and it has a really nice, not mattifying effect, but it's not, it doesn't leave me dewy or greasy. So I've been really liking it in the summertime. But to start off with base, I have, it, this is not a new product, but it's new to me. It's the Milk Makeup, um, what's this called? The Hydro Grip Primer, which I know has a major cult following, and I just have never tried it, so I'm actually really excited to give it a shot. I am not a big primer person just because I focus so heavily on skincare, but I think it is really nice to have a reliable primer on days where you need long wear for special events or occasions or if you're gonna be outside for a long time, stuff like that. So this is the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. I love the packaging. It comes with a little plastic pump. So I'm just gonna take, I'm gonna start out conservative. I think I'm just going to take one or two pumps if it'll come out. Okay, there it is. Okay, so that is two pumps right there. So I think I'm just going to use this in the sort of center of my face. So lately I have been really oily. I mean, it's it's hot, I live in LA. Um, and so in my T-zone, that's kind of where makeup breaks up the fastest. So this feels really nice. It's actually not as sticky as I thought it would feel. Um, I kind of anticipated a more gluey texture, but it's actually kind of like a thicker serum. And as it's drying down, I'm starting to feel the tackiness. Um, one thing that I am gonna be looking out for with this primer is whether it makes me more oily, just because it is that kind of grippy, dewier, sort of wet feeling primer. So we will see. I'm not gonna take it all the way out to the outside perimeter of my face just because that's not really where I need help from a primer. So again, keeping it very focused in like the center of my face. So because this primer is new to me, I actually wanna pair it with a foundation that's an old favorite that I know really well. So I'm going to use my Dior Backstage Foundation. I'm just going to apply it with fingers. This primer has already sort of set down and I, I do feel it has a slightly grippy feeling, but it's again, it's not gluey, it's not sticky, and it's not unpleasant. So I'm going to apply Dior Backstage with my fingers. So I really like the way that the foundation applied over that primer. I'm actually really surprised that the primer didn't change the finish of the foundation. The, fin the foundation is still a very natural finish. It's not super matte, it's not dewy, it's just right in the middle. And I'm realizing how much this primer is not what I expected. I actually like that the, makeup, the Milk Makeup Primer didn't change the finish of my foundation. So we'll see how it wears throughout the day. That's the true test of of a primer. Um, maybe I'll do a check-in at the end of the day, but I'm gonna continue on with concealer. I don't have a new concealer to test today, so I'm gonna go in with my usual trusty Armani Power Fabric Concealer in the shade number five, and I'm going to blend it out with a beauty sponge. So that's the base done. I really like the way the skin looks. We'll see how it wears throughout the day as that's the true test of a primer. But I do wanna talk about the color story for today's look. Um, I haven't powdered because I wanna move on to cream cheek products. I think I'm gonna go for a warm toned look today because I have two new shades from Salt New York. This is their mini palette or their small palette. And these top two shades are their summer shades. This is Terracotta and this is the shade Flora. And the, these are their creme tint pros, their lip and cheek um, multi-use cream products. And then I have the palette from Odin's Eye. It's called the Verdani palette. And it has a lot of warm, rusty orange tones. 
I'm especially interested in trying these two and this orange topper today. So I think I'm gonna go for a slightly burnt orangey look. So let's try out the terracotta shade from Salt New York. I'll swatch both of the new shades for you. So this is the shade Flora. And these are a sort of waxy formula that melt and become really dewy once you sort of run your finger through them. And these are on the dewier side of the cream cheek products that I have. So they sheer out really beautifully. They give you such a nice like watercolor effect. They're, they are very buildable in pigment as well. So that is Flora and this bottom shade is Terracotta. So I think let's go in with terracotta today. I'm just gonna use my fingers. I'm gonna take the finger that I already used to swatch and I'm just going to dab it onto the cheeks and blend out with fingers. I am very familiar with this formula. I've worked with Salt New York before and I just really love their brand ethos. They're super committed to sustainability, to minimalist packaging, and overall really intentional releases. And they also have an amazing array of um, bronzers in a multitude of depths from light to deep and highlighters as well. And so I like that for an indie company, they, they are still really attentive to shade range and inclusivity in their releases. So you can see how easily that blends out. And I, something I really like about their formula is how evenly it blends out. So some cream cheek products, I find that they can, I don't know, like they're a little patchy or they bl don't blend out evenly. Or if you're dabbing with fingers, your finger t sometimes lifts up product. That never happens with this formula. And I feel like I can just always trust them to give me a really nice, yeah, like glowing from within, watercolor, diffused, I don't know, just, yeah, a fresh wash of color. And I really like that. I think I'm gonna take a sponge, and this is a great tip for, yeah, for blending any cream cheek products. Just take a beauty sponge and run it around the edges where the blush meets your foundation. And it just gives you a slightly more natural look. So that shade is actually pretty pigmented and I think would be really beautiful on deep skin tones. I think Flora would also be really beautiful on deep skin tones. So that is Terracotta. Okay, for the rest of the cheeks, I have some products from Trini London. So they actually sent over two of their cream cheek products, which are really cute. They're stackable. That's kind of what they're known for. And they have a variety of formulas. They have cheek formulas, blushes, highlighters. This is their blush in the shade VB, which I thought about using too, but I don't think I'm gonna add more blush for now. I'm gonna go in with their highlighter, which is called The Right Light. This is the shade Candlelight. It's a really creamy sort of champagne, and I like that it's, um, it's sort of oily, not in a bad way. It just um, sort of melts, that's what it is. It's more of a melty sort of cream cheek formula. And I, I like that it spreads out really nicely. It has a sort of warm um, peachy undertone to it, which I think really works for my skin tone. I also like that the pigments in it are more of a pearl. This doesn't have any glitter particles. It doesn't have any obvious chunks of shimmer or anything like that. It's just a really nice, very natural highlighter, which is what I'm all about these days. I don't really go for a blingy highlighter. Um, and I also really like how small and compact the packaging is. So that is the right light in the shade Candlelight. So I might go in with bronzer a little bit later, but I think I'm gonna move on to eyes because I really want the eyes to be the focus of the look today. So this is the Verandi palette from Odin's Eye. Um, this is actually not PR. My friend Gabby, Gabby Alvarez on Instagram, um, gave this to me the last time we hung out and she has just been raving about their formula, especially their like foiled shades. So I really wanna play around with that today. This color story is fun, it's kind of like a warm and cool, it has this like pop of icy blue, but I'm definitely gonna lean into the warm tones today. So I just set my eyes with some translucent powder and let's just play with this palette. 
So I'm gonna start with this shade, which is called Now. And Odin's Eye is a Swedish brand that is a sort of newer indie brand. It does have a bit of kick up, which I don't mind at all. Just tap off your brush. This is a matte shade that has a bit of shimmer, but I'm not sure if the shimmer will show up once it's blended out. So I'm just going to define the eye a little bit, just kind of create a really diffused, I don't know, this has like a sort of creamsicle vibe to it. And I'm just going to, yeah, create a wash of that over the eye. I do see some of the little glitters are um, sticking to the eye, but it's not really a very noticeable shimmer. Actually, you know what? I do see the shimmer particles sticking to the eye a little bit more now, but I don't mind it. And it's blending out really evenly and it's nice and pigmented. I'm gonna sort of blend that out into the brow bone on the outer edges. And let's take a bit under the eye as well, just sort of connecting to the outer corner. Okay, I'm gonna take a smaller brush and go into this shade called Vibrant. It's a really warm, sort of burnt orange kind of shade. It has a lot of red in it. And this is the Sonia G Mini Booster Brush. So I'm just going to dip that in. This has less kick up than the first shade, um, that orange shade called Now. And I'm just going to sort of lift the eye a little bit and blend that out. I generally go for a slightly lifted eye shape just because that's my preference for um, my eyes and I like to elongate the eye a little bit, but totally up to you. That's just what I like. I feel like this um, opens up my eye a lot. Okay, we are at the point of the eyeshadow look where it is a trust the process kind of a moment. I'm gonna stop because I really want the focus of the eye to be this foiled orange shade. Let me swatch it. It feels incredibly wet. Like I think there are a lot of oils in here. You can see how super foiled that shade is. And let me swatch it. It honestly feels like a cream eyeshadow. It's so cool. It has like a flash of green in it. It doesn't actually look orange at all. Um, it's more of like a golden, yeah, like a gold with a slightly greenish flash. That is so cool. So I'm going to use this all over the eye and I think this is the kind of formula that would work best with a finger because it does have a lot of those oils and it legitimately feels like a cream eyeshadow. It's so weird. I don't think I've ever felt this, for this texture in an eyeshadow palette before. So I'm just going to apply that really generously all over the lid, um, even above my crease, as I always do, and sort of blend it into that shade on the outer corner of the eye. Wow, I cannot believe how this feels. It's so weird. And then it sort of sets down, I feel like. So, very cool. This eyeshadow also has kind of a density to it, like because it is, it has such an oily base. Um, yeah, you can feel like a creaminess, it sticks to the eye as you press it down. And it has a sort of, yeah, like a thicker density to it. Really interesting. I'm going to take a flat um, shader brush and just sort of see if I can diffuse the edges of that shadow. This is what I would do with a cream shadow too if I applied it with fingers. And sort of, because it has a lot of micro glitters in it, I sort of want to diffuse the micro glitters um, just at the edges so it has a nice kind of twinkly effect as it fades out over the eye and it is easy to manipulate, I will say. It's not like it sticks and then you can't move it around. It does have sort of a malleability to the formula. And I did notice it lifted up a bit of that orange when I was pressing it down with my finger because I was pressing so hard, so we'll go back and blend that area. I think I'm gonna take this glitter sort of into the inner corner right here. diffuse it all over the eye. Yeah, it, it doesn't have a very deep um, 
base color or really much of a base color at all even though in the pan it looks like a really sort of light orange. So I'm gonna go back into that first orange, this shade, and just sort of diffuse and bring that color in and use it to sort of connect that deeper orange we put on the outer corner to the glitter. And this actually is applying, I was wondering if this would apply over the glitter, and it actually is applying really well and it's sort of sticking over the glitter so it has more of a blended quality. It's really pretty. I don't know if the camera is gonna pick up the complexity of this glitter, but it's really stunning. Then I'm going to take that small mini booster brush again into this deep brown. It's called Every Day. It's just a warm, nice warm mid to deep brown. And I'm just going to deepen up the outer corner for just a little bit of definition. I'm not going for like a real smoky look today, but I just want to bring a little bit of definition and contour the eye just on that outer corner. And then I'm going to connect that to the outer corner and the lower lash line right here. Just a little bit of definition. So I'm going to stop there with the eye look. Let me just give you a close up of what it looks like. And I don't have new mascara or eyeliner to test, so I'm just going to line my waterline with a dark brown eyeliner, do mascara, and then we can finish off the lips. Okay, so I'm back. I put on a lot of mascara on my top and bottom lashes just because I really wanted the eyes to pop um, from behind all of that glitter. And I also went for a slightly bolder brow today. I totally forgot I have these Revlon eyeshadow palettes that I was maybe going to play with, but I think I'm gonna save them for another time. But I am really interested by them. They, I haven't tried a drugstore eyeshadow in a while, I'll be honest, but I don't know, these have this really beautiful uh, foil look to them and the I don't know if you can tell but the pans themselves have sort of a wave pattern and they look really pretty. Let me swatch one. This is the pink shade. This color story is called the Big Bang and this color story is called Tantrum. So maybe I'll try those in another video. But that is the pink shade right there. Yeah, just a really pretty sort of metallic eyeshadow formula. And I really like these color stories. So I just wanted to show you those even though um, I won't be able to play with them today. I just decided I'm not going to use bronzer, but I do wanna deepen up the blush. So I'm actually going in with a brush this time to just kind of, I don't know, sweep the blush back to where the bronzer would be. So I just have a kind of like really diffused all over cheek look and I'm just going to make that color a little bit more defined so it acts as a sort of bronzer and blush and I think with these sort of terracotta shades you can do that because they have that warm like brown undertone to them at least on my skin tone I really like doing this with these tones of blush and then I took a little bit of what's left on the brush and I just sort of like sweep it around the perimeter of my face. And this doesn't even really deposit a lot of color, but it just gives an overall nice blend to the face. And then Urban Decay sent over a ton of lip products. So they just reformulated their Vice lipsticks, which are a classic in the line. Um, so they reformulated them to be vegan and they also repackaged them. And they have this really like sexy, cool packaging. And the lid comes off at this diagonal. It has a metallic purple tube and of course, the Urban Decay embossing on the side of the tube. So maybe I'll just swatch these real quick for you and um, we can decide which we want to wear. Okay, so I'm just gonna swatch these down the side of my arm in the order in which I pick them up because there are honestly a bunch. So this is the shade Local and it comes in a shine formula and the shine formulas have a rounded tube. So, um, 
there are three different formulas within the Vice range. So there's Shine, there's Cream, and there's Matte. So this is a Shine formula in the shade Local. Really pretty sort of cool tone pinky mauve color. This is the shade What's Your Sign, which is like a peachy nude, and this is a matte. So you can definitely see it's warmer than that first shade. And really, it's a matte, but it's actually very creamy, and it's buildable to like a full coverage pigment. Next is the shade Liar, and it is a cream formula. This is also a slightly more peachy nude. Ooh, that might be a nice shade for today. That's totally my kind of nude. Right there. Then I have the shade Art Walk, which is a matte color. It's a sort of more bright pink. It almost has like a bit of, oh yeah, that's a nice bright pink, like a blue undertone right there. These are not the best swatches. It's actually really hard to swatch at this angle. Then I have the shade Love Trap, which is a shine formula. Also with a bluish undertone, a little bit more, a little, not quite as bright as the one before it. Next is the shade Naked, which is one of their classics, I think. And this is a cream formula. So this one definitely has the most, I think, neutral undertone of all of the ones that I've swatched so far. Then we're getting into the reds and I have the shade Olvera, which is a cream. And it's a really nice, like actually a really nice terracotta sort of orangey red right there. The next one is called the big one and this is a matte shade. And this is like a true red, sort of like uh, more blue based red. It actually has almost a bit of coral in it. So these colors look a little bit different on camera. Like for example, in the viewfinder, which is where I keep looking, this sort of has a more brown undertone than it does in person. It does have a slight terracotta, terracotta quality to it, but it's not as um, deep as it looks on camera. And then lastly, this is the shade the 405 and it's in the shine formula and this is like a sort of blue based cherry red really pretty they also sent over a bunch of their glosses this is the shade name drop i already opened this one and these are um what are these called they're sh plumping shine balms so they are very shiny but they do have that sort of plumping quality they're not like super minty but they do have a little bit of that. So this is the shade, um, what was this called? Name Drop. I'm also very into this shade that I have not tried yet. It's called My Dude and it's like a really bright coral sort of shade. You can see how much more pigment that has. Oops. That's My Dude. This is called Runyon. It has a really pretty sort of milky milk chocolate sort of color to it. Right there. This is the shade Cruisin, which is kind of a mauve pink. Okay, so those are all of the swatches. I'm sorry, I can't remember the names because there's so many. And these are the glosses, but you can go back in the video. I've said all of the names. You know what? I think I'm actually gonna go for something kind of simple. I'm excited about this shade My Dude in the gloss formula. So I'm just gonna go in with the shade My Dude. And these have sort of a chubbier doe foot applicator, kind of like a paddle shape. And this is one of the formulas that does have a little bit of glitter in it, but you actually cannot see the glitter on the lips. All right, so that is the shade My Dude on the lips. I really like it. It 
provides a nice wash of like a very sheer coral color, but it doesn't add too much color. It still has that really pretty translucency and it just makes the lips look really juicy. It does have the plumping effect. It slightly has that menthol effect, but nothing strong at all. I almost don't really notice it unless I'm thinking about it, which is what I prefer. I really don't like the strong feeling of like intense lip plumpers. So if you're worried about that, I wouldn't be, it's very subtle. So that is the look for today. Um, I am going to go about the rest of my day. I'm filming a few other things. I will do a check-in later, but I'm really happy with how things wore. The skin looks great so far. I mean, it's only been like an hour since I applied my base, so it's not that different, but that looked great. I had a lot of fun playing with that eyeshadow palette, the Salt New York blush I loved, of course, and the Trini London highlighter was really nice. So I think it's been a really good and pretty successful day of playing with new makeup, but I will do a check in later um, in the day and let you know how that primer wore. Hi everyone, it's about six or seven hours after I've applied my makeup. It is almost the end of the work day, so I just wanted to check in because I'm actually about to take my makeup off to go for a swim. But I wanted to show you the makeup and here is how everything looks right now. I am super happy with how the Milk Hydro Grip Primer um, made my makeup base wear today. Obviously, I'm shiny. I'm glowy. I'm, um, I have oily skin, so that's pretty normal for me by the end of the day. But that said, the foundation does not look patchy. I feel like it didn't break apart even when the oils peeked through, and it's not like... Um, yeah, like certain parts of the foundation wore off while others stayed on. It doesn't have any of that effect. I feel like with the primer, even though I'm glowy, it still is holding the makeup together. So hence the grip part of the name. So I totally understand why it's a cult classic. I don't think I have really demanding foundation needs. I work from home. I don't often have super long days where I'm wearing makeup, but that said, I think it's a nice product to have in my arsenal for um, if I do have longer makeup days and just want a little something extra, a little security blanket for my makeup base. Other than that, everything wore beautifully. The cheek products wore beautifully. The eyeshadow looks amazing. I'm really excited to check out more from Odin's Eye. Obviously the lip gloss wore off and I also filmed a lip swatch video um, lip swatching all of the lipsticks and glosses that I showed you earlier. So I will actually link that, at, I think I'm gonna post it as an Instagram reel, but I will link that in the description box in case you're curious about how any of the other colors look on the lips. And other than that, I'm gonna close out the video here. I hope you enjoyed. I would love for you to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.